I want to get to some things that I heard about uh, Nico yesterday and why Tennessee is not going to play Nico and uh, not that they were going to anyway. <clears throat> but what I was told is he's gained 20 pounds. So that would put him at about what? He came in at what, 195, Caleb? Is that right? Yes, 196. Okay, 196. So let's say he's pushing 220. He's, he's, in, he's in that realm. So I think he's big enough to play. But the thing what I, that I was told is that uh, Tennessee's players would lose a lot of faith if Nico went running out there against Vanderbilt on Saturday. That they've been told this whole time, Joe Milton is your guy. They've led them to a seven-win season, probably will be eight, and that he could lose the players on this football team. There, I was also told there are a lot of players who thought they were just going to step in and win 10 games each and every year. So some of the young players are like, what the H? What's going on? So I don't think, and I've been as pro Nico as anybody in the media that I'm aware of. I don't think you can run him out against Vanderbilt playing this week. You could lose your the, the trust and faith from your football team, especially the younger players. John, am I being too sensitive? You're being way too sensitive. This is big-time college football. Are you kidding? You play the best guy. What has the Joe Milton offense produced the last two weeks? Not much. They got seven on Missouri, ten on Georgia. Oh, if they could only hit those last – those last minute field goals, then that would have upped the point total. Uh, no, this is a competitive venture. If this guy's not playing well, he shouldn't be out there. If you've got somebody you think's better, I'm not worried about, oh man, that, you know, the guys might not like that so much since Joe's a senior. And, you know, we have won seven games against a, a pretty accommodating schedule. So we'll just keep playing Joe. I mean, come on. You got to play the best. Football is all about competition, not at co just at quarterback in the offensive line, the defensive line, secondary, running back, you name it. The best guy should play. If they think they can do better with Nico, then he needs to be playing. Forget all that warm and fuzzy stuff. I tend to um, agree with you until you get to this point in the season. I think it would be strange to make the move now. And you're probably going to beat Vanderbilt anyway, Caleb. Yeah, John, that's right, Matt. You're going to beat Vanderbilt anyway. I, I, it's, I don't think it hurts to be a little warm and fuzzy and let Joe just finish off his last game because here, I don't think Joe's going to play the bowl game. I think that Joe's going to opt out and try to focus on his draft. I think, I, Dave, you could, or John, you may get, be able to give us you know, sources. I don't. I think Josh Heupel is going to nudge Joe Milton to opt out and play for the draft so he could play Nico in the bowl game. Also, if he plays Nico against Vanderbilt, and in the bowl game, I believe at that point he burns the red shirt. And just for the sake of whether or not there's an injury, you want to kind of keep the red shirt with Nico at this point, since he's only played three games. And yeah, I, I don't think, understand. I, I the, the red shirt, no offense. The red shirt makes no sense to me. If he's playing in five years, then you you've got the wrong. Well, board. you don't know if there's an what if there's an injury or something. Like what if there's an injury or two? Or I mean, what if NIL or in this in the age of NIL? There's a chance NIL is going to keep some quarterbacks around longer than they should be. Um, Nico got to Tennessee because of an $8 million contract. <laughs> so, yeah, but if he's you know. not a first-round pick at the end of his time at Tennessee, John, based off all we heard, isn't that a disappointment? Well, very much so. I mean, five-star quarterbacks don't, don't stick around five years. Well, JT Daniels did. did. I'm sorry. JT Daniels has been around 12 years and played at 15 schools. <laughs> yeah, that's he's, true. I, I think um, he's going to be a travel people, agent, John. That was his. That was his plan. Some it's working just, well. Like, some people do stay. I mean, I, I know it was four, not five, but Peyton Manning came back for '97 when he was going to be a number one draft pick um, the year before. I personally think he came back because he didn't want to get drafted by the Jets. And who can blame him for that? But um, I so I think some people I think NIL. It's not that you won't you go pro because of the money or something like that. You would, but I think look, I'm saying there's a chance that Tennessee's boosters cobble up some money to keep Nico. And then there's the other factor again. What I'm trying to bring up is there's the injury factor. What if Nico just 
I mean, Hendon Hooker had trouble staying healthy until that last two years with Tennessee. And look at what he did. So, and that was at Virginia Tech, obviously. But what if Nico's battling injuries for a couple of years and he needs that redshirt to have a year to himself? I'm just saying there's reasons that players do redshirt beyond just they weren't good until their fourth or fifth year. So I think just just for Murphy's Law, worst case scenario, you redshirt, you if you can use the redshirt, use the redshirt because you don't know what'll happen. Well, one thing about it, uh, Nico could uh he could transfer at the end of this year and start out anywhere, be ready to play next year as a as a freshman, have four years to play. You know, we haven't brought that up, but what if he's frustrated by the lack of playing time? Well, we don't is. know that. That's purely conjecture. I mean, I've heard different things on different sides that his family wanted him to red shirt, all that kind of good stuff. I don't know that I believe that. Uh, but I think uh, a really good players, really good players usually want to play and they're not afraid. Oh, I might get hurt. They don't look at it that way. So, uh, yeah, that's a possibility. I mean, Caleb just said Nico got eight million dollars to come here. All right. So he's a mercenary. If somebody else offers him twelve million, why wouldn't he leave? Because Tennessee would be the school that offers twelve million. I think Tennessee. I don't think any <laughs> school can match Tennessee's NIL right now. But you don't know that. I mean, what about a Southern California? They can match anything. I don't think they can match Tennessee. I don't. Um, well, Tennessee has, the, according to the rankings. Uh, Tennessee is first in NIL collectives, but Texas A&M's getting stuff together and they're number two. So I don't think Tennessee is far and away the best collective. I think they're one of the best but collectives. Let's, let's break this. Let's let's take the Nico incentive. Okay, you guys talk about him transferring because he's not upset about starting this year when, like, he knows for a fact he's going to start next year. He's a, he's got a, he's got a starting spot guaranteed for him next year if you know, going into the spring if he doesn't get hurt at Tennessee. So we're saying he might transfer where he would not have a starting spot guaranteed because he's not happy that he started this year. And on the off chance too, that some school that has no, that doesn't have Tennessee's in, like you bring up Texas A&M. Okay. Texas. A if you're Nico, what would you rather do? Stay at Tennessee where you have a guaranteed starting spot next year in Josh Heupel system or go to Texas A&M where you have no idea what's in store for that program in the future. No, 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 no. We're speaking I, I just... hypothetically here. I mean, there's no yeah. – I'm not saying he, he might – he's going to transfer or could – I just think there's the possibility out there. There are different ways to look at that. What if he looks at this depth chart and thinks, next season's offensive line could get me killed or at least seriously injured? What if I want to go somewhere where I've got a better offensive line? Um, those kind of – the better receivers – what if they tell him that you're going to be an opening quarterback competition with Zach Merklinger and he says Jake Merklinger, Jake Mer Merklinger, excuse me, and, and Zach Merklinger, he will be in yeah, the and Zach, yeah, both brother. of them, yeah. But if he, if he were to say that and he said, you know, I beat the hell out of Joe Milton in practice all year, why am I competing with anybody? I mean, kids think like this sometimes. Well, yeah, I just. I don't rule out anything in the transfer portal NIL era. There, there are guys that are, it's head scratching decisions. Well, why would somebody, uh, why would Jermaine Burton, wide receiver, leave uh, Georgia for Alabama when he just won a national championship, beat Alabama? Uh, that's fair because he's a 19 year old kid, 20 year old kid. I would be the I, best answer. But, uh, and it's not just Nico making a decision, probably, you know, is. I think the families get more involved in that than ever now because there's money at stake. It's well, not just a scholarship. They're involved too. So, well, I think you'd be better off here. Look what they did this year. Look at their depth chart. They may do more investigating in this than a college kid would. That you know, look at look. They've got two all conference offensive linemen coming back. Uh, that kind of thing. I just think there's so much that can go into this. I don't think Nico will transfer, but I wouldn't rule it out is what I'm saying. Well, and I don't think the fact that somebody posting with the last name Milton on our YouTube when we tried to reach out to him saying, why do you all blame my son for everything? So it's not all his fault. That to me is a red flag. 
Um, I, I, mean, I can't tell you, I can't tell you a hundred percent that it's Joe Milton's dad, but why would you phrase it like that? Why would you, what, what was the phraseology? It, it was, well, his last name was Milton. And he said, why would you blame everything on my son? It's not all his fault. But we haven't I, though on this show at all. We've, we've been very critical of Milton, but we've put a lot on the receivers not emerging. I mean, John earlier just said the receivers not emerging has been a big disappointment. I've been a little critical. Of, uh, well, Dave's been very critical. I don't think we have Caleb. I think Joe so Joe Milton's it. dad, if that's who issued that, and who knows who wrote that, but I... he needs to talk to Dave, yeah. maybe in a parking lot somewhere uh, late at night. Been in that situation. 